Hi, it's Kelly here, and I have a, an answer for an electroculture question that has been like question number one for electroculture, and I would like to answer it in a different way than uh, I've seen other people answering it, and I want to give you a, a demo of just how it works. And the question is, which way should the coil be in your electroculture? Should it be clockwise or counterclockwise? And I want to suggest to you, and, and most people will say it should be clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, and I tend to agree with that. Uh, if you were to do it that way, however, I'm going to suggest to you a different way that handles it, plus it makes your electric culture stronger at the same time. So, uh, and now I want to give you a demonstration. So this is a copper wire. And in a copper wire, you have the electricity or whatever, the electrons that go from one end to the other. And I have no idea if it's going left to right or right to left, but that's just the way it is. It's going in one direction. So when you coil it, it makes a difference because in chemistry, compounds, some compounds, they need to have something approach it from the right direction, otherwise it won't connect. So if you, if you come from the opposite direction, it just won't. You know, it's like combing your hair forwards or backwards, you know. Uh, you can comb it backwards all you want, and that's not going to make it go forward. Uh, I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but, you know, it, it's, it's all I got. So anyway, so you got the energy going in one direction. Now, let me show you the other way of doing it, and that is, is to fold your or bend your wire in half, like this. All right? So now you got a looped end and the open end. Now, the, you've got a wire going this way, and you have the a wire coming back the other way. So when these are next to each other, those electrons are bouncing off of each other. That, and that creates frequencies, which is lovely. That's what we want. All right? So now we've got it going in both directions. But we don't want to stop there because we want to make it even stronger still. As you may know, uh, the development or invention of coaxial cables, they found it makes it for a better, gives you more power. When, and coaxial means that they're, they're wound around. There may be several wires wrapped around, you know, twisted or braided, as, as you might say. Um, so what, I, what you do, it's real simple, and I've got this set up here. Here's a hand drill. And I stuck the looped end in here because if you try to stick both of these ends in at the same time, it's, it might be a little tricky. You might not get a good grip. And I hope, hopefully I've got a good grip here. Um, and then you're going to take your pliers, and I'm going to use, I'm going to set this down for a second because uh, my manual dexterity is about as good as your four-year-old's, right? So uh, I'm going to just pinch that like this on the other end, and I'm going to gently, as best I can, turn this on. It doesn't matter which direction it goes, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise, because it, it turns out it'll be going in this, well, I'll explain in a minute. So here, let me try to turn this on. Oop, I gotta push this button a little further. And I wanna just gently, because it, see, if it's not gentle, it will, uh, it'll, it'll uh, bunch up, you know what I mean? And once it bunches up, it doesn't really want to unbunch. So I think, I think that's good enough. Uh, let me put my glasses on to see, see what my results are here. Um, yeah, I could probably do it a little bit more. Let me, let me see about this here. And that's the great thing about this is that uh, you can, you know, trial and error. I can see how it's doing. I want to hold, you know, I'm holding it, the uh, pliers here as, as, as firmly. And you see, once it, it's gotten to the end there, and that's, that's 
far as I want to go, you can experiment with it, see how far you can go before it bunches up. Uh, so you, you know, as you make more of these, you can, you can see the optimal twist amount or length, the, the, the length of the twist in there. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this. When you twist it, there are two, two beautiful things about this. When you twist it like this, you've already got the copper going in both directions, right? Yeah. And there's an infinite number, and, and, and they're agitating each other because you got the negatives going this way and the positives going that, this way. And the, and, the, and the two negatives are bumping into each other, freaking them out, and they're, they're, they're throwing off all kinds of uh, frequencies. And because you have a bunch of them, you're throwing off any number of different frequencies. And, and also because the electron is trying to bounce out, it's going to bump into these other electrons at different lengths. So you're going to have an untold, just this little copper wire here produces an untold number of different frequencies. We hear so much about, oh, this frequency is good for this and this frequency is good for that, and, and there's a lot of truth to that. However, any frequency, too much of any frequency can be bad. You know, they, what do they say? Moderation in all things. And what does nature do? When the sun produces its frequencies, uh, does it produce the same frequency? Heck no. Every single flame that shoots off of the sun is producing an untold number of different frequencies. And, and they're all different shapes and sizes. And that's what you get with this. You're getting all different shapes and sizes. And the way that everything is designed with frequencies because they're, they're non-material, basically. They, they're going to where they're needed. And the ones that resonate with the, se the seed or the plant will be used beneficially. And the ones that are, are not beneficial, they just, they just go on by without any, any you know, nothing. You know? So that's how you, you uh, get by the question of, you know, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, you've made it stronger and you've made a heck of a lot more frequencies and that's beneficial to everybody. Let me also mention that Lakowski, who, who really uh, advanced this whole thing tremendously, although he didn't, he used to, he didn't even use a, cop, a bent wire, uh, twisted, he just used a straight one on a piece of wood. And and his experiments, he had the wood sticking in the ground and not the copper. And it healed plants that they, he had infected with what he called a cancer. And the other, the other plants died. And, and the uh, geraniums that he planted that had the copper wire around it and the piece of wood, the simple uh, open looped copper wire, it was a circle around it, a piece of wood in, in the ground. And that one thrived for years. So that's another thing. You, you have the option, whatever is most convenient for you. You can put the wood in the ground. You can put the copper in the ground. Either one. And uh, oh, let me say, add one more thing about this. You know, people are it's starting to come out a little bit. People saying, well, what kind of studies do you have? Or what, what's this, that, the other? Well, let me say this. There have been millions of farmers in the history of mankind, or maybe billions, who didn't have an eighth grade education, formal education that is, and they grew enough food to feed their family and prosper because they worked from experience and they would pass along their education, the father to the son, and say, I, I do it this way because this is what works. If we do the other, thing, the other way, it doesn't work. And so the son has, gets that education from his father plus the experience that he gets growing, and then he passes that along to his son, and it went like that. And so, whereas, while education, formal education can be marvelous, I mean, it, I, it, if it wasn't for me going to college, this book, The Doctor Cures Cancer, wouldn't have been written. Um, but um, otherwise, it's, we should not discount the experience of farmers. So when people say, well, we got to prove it first or whatever. Well, 
you know, you can get to be my age before you plant anything. <laughs> you know, so, you know, and there's, and meanwhile, there's people taking pictures left and right, putting them on YouTube, showing you incredible results. So you decide how you want to go with that. You know, if you, if you want to be a scientist and stick to it, I, I would suggest you do the study. Don't ask others to do the study. You do it yourself, and when you get the results, you can report back to us. And then if, you, if it doesn't work for you, we're going to point out where you were wrong in, in the formulation of your study. And that can go on for years and years and decades and decades. Meanwhile, everyone else is growing huge, super abundant uh, food. And that will be extremely important because I just saw today on a business website uh, reporting that the cost of food is expected to go up 40% in the next six months. We've already seen it jump, what, 40%, depending on what it is that you're buying. Could be more than that. Uh, and, and now they're expecting another uh, price increase uh, coming up. So this will allow you to grow more food and you, people who are doing it are not using pesticides because they're having very few bugs and, then, and they're not necessarily using uh, fertilizers because they don't need them. And so the cost of the food for you goes down and you create an abundance and maybe you have a little, maybe you sell them or you give them to your family or, or you'll just have them stocked up for a long time in cases in time of hardship, whatever. Um, finally, uh, or maybe finally, it, it, there's another way of doing this and I call it Electroculture 2.0. And I invite you to check out my videos and see where I say it's 100 times, Electroculture 2.0 is 100 times more <clears throat> effective than, than this way. You can do it this way until you get your electric culture 2.0 in. I don't sell the stuff, but you, you know you do have to order uh, something. You do it one time, takes a minute, and you can, and it'll cover an entire garden. It'll cover an entire farm. I don't care. It could be a thousand acres, and it will cover it. One. And it takes one minute to set it up. And it takes about a month to six weeks to get it in. So go ahead and do this in the meantime, and uh, we're going to make this world a, a wonderful place. We're going to have, uh, what do they call them? Is it trellis? I'm not sure. You know, the, the canopies, trellis? I, I, I'm really hung up on them right now because they're, they're, I've had experiences that were some of the most extraordinary experiential things I've ever had in my life just by being under one. So I'll just leave it there with that. So uh, if you want to know more about uh, the kinds of energies I'm talking about, they're in this book here which is, is there a question that heals instantly? It's, it's bonus material in this book. This provides a question that instantly helps people take care of whatever challenges their emotional and mental challenges are facing as far as the things we all run into. Every day we are challenged by not wanting to do something or someone yelling at us or, or traffic that we get upset or I always say dropping something on the floor because that's hard for me with my broken back, uh, whatever it is. And this question allows you to shift. And I must tell you, it also, if you're, if you're looking that way and you use this question, you'll also find that you become more inventive, more innovative, and more insightful to the challenges that you have, you know, the everyday challenges, you know, just ideas of how to do stuff. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So. Uh, Oh, the question works instantly, and it's hardwired in your brain to work. So enough about that. I hope this video has been helpful. If you like it, sh uh, subscribe, because I'm coming up with videos all the time, and every once in a while I make one as good as this one. And, uh, you know, you could like it, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know how, you, you know, if you've been doing this, let us know how, how that's been working out for you, what it's done. And a specific example, really, people love that. If you can give us a little example of what it's done, oh my gosh, people just eat that up. So thank you. We're going to make this world a, a, a huge garden of Eden. I saw love bugs today. For five years, they had disappeared. Um, and then in the last three years, they've come back again. So I'm very pleased. First, they came back just slowly, just for a couple of days. And now they're back for, you know, their last year, they were back for two weeks. It was beautiful. Um, anyway, I had two of, two of them got inside the car. They always go in twos, you know. 
and they were on my windshield on the inside. <laughs> so I got to watch them as I was driving down the road. So anyway, that's enough for, for now. You take care. It's more than enough. You take care, and God bless.